online. So great to have you here with us. Teacher jo Zoe, how are you doing? I'm doing well, thanks, Teacher Bear. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Um, Teacher Zoe, uh, what's on your back? Wow, um, I have my backpack today here with me. Um, but you're going to have to guess what's in there. I think there is chocolates in there. Ooh. Maybe? Maybe. 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 Alrighty. Guys, comment down below what you think is inside Teacher Zoe's backpack, and we're going to find out soon, hey? Yes. Very, yes. very soon. Alrighty, guys. We don't have a winner for this service, but we had first service winners. It was Ty, Josh, and Caleb. Congratulations, guys. That was super, super cool. We have resources on our website, lots of coloring in, super cool crafts, and we'd love to see you guys send them to us. Alrighty, Teacher Zoe, are you ready for some dancing? So ready, you guys. Get your dancing shoes on and let's get into praise and worship. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Put on your armor guy. Put on your armor guy. Put on your armor guy. You got your armor guy. Got my belt of truth check. Breastplate of righteousness. Shoes of peace. Shield of hate. Helmet of salvation. Sword of the spirit. Helmet of salvation. Sword of the spirit. Show. 
Thank you, Teacher Jono and Teacher Elizabeth, for that awesome praise and worship. So, boys and girls, let's find out what is in my backpack. All right, let's see. I've got some surprises for you here. All right, so the first thing is a scarf. Okay, toss that to the side. Um, let's see. I have my favorite mug from home. Okay. Um, Let's see what else I can find in my backpack. Um, I have a marker over here, which is great, but that's not what we're going to be talking about today. So what we are talking about today is something that I can't have in my actual bag here. Um, and today we will be talking about forgiveness. And so we've been doing this What's in Your Backpack series, and today is forgiveness. Have you ever been hurt by someone? Has someone ever said something that hurt you? Or maybe your friend stole your favorite pair of shoes, um, or maybe someone you thought was a friend went and lied about you behind your back. That hurts, right? When, someone, when people do something against us that isn't nice, it hurts, hey? Now let's think about ourselves, though ever lied? Maybe your parents told you not to eat that last cookie and you were just so hungry that you had to eat it, okay? Have you maybe ever stolen something even though you knew that it wasn't yours, that it didn't belong to you? Maybe you just, you just wanted to take it, okay? That is what we call sin. And just like how when, we, when someone hurts us, sin hurts God's heart. But now the cool thing about God is that, you see, when someone 
does something to us and they come back and they ask for our forgiveness, right? Sometimes it's hard to give it to them. Sometimes it still hurts inside a little bit. Maybe two weeks later, it still hurts inside. Um, or maybe even months later, maybe today you're holding on to something that someone did to you ages ago, right? When we ask God for his forgiveness, he forgives us completely. He wipes our slate completely clean. Isn't that amazing? But that doesn't give us an excuse to just do whatever we want and then run back to God for forgiveness, right? In the same way that... We in the same way that with someone we love, um, we're not just going to keep hurting them just because we know that they're going to forgive us. So here, at, here today, I've got an object lesson for you guys. And you guys remember parables, right? Parables were short stories that Jesus would tell that would help him explain big concepts. And so we are going to do something similar today. So here I've got this lovely whiteboard. Let's put it down. All right, I've got this lovely whiteboard, and I want you to think of this whiteboard as yourself. Um, as you can see, it is white, it is clean, um, it is pure, and that is like us. We are created in God's image. We are created to reflect God. Um, and just like this whiteboard, we are clean and pure, and God has made us this way. Um, but now, let's say... Let's say that you're out with your friends, right? Um, and you guys start talking about someone, and you know it's wrong, and, but you, know, you just want to keep going, at, or that person made you really angry. Um, and so you start talking about someone behind their back. Um, so you gossip. Or maybe um, you had a really hard day, um, and you just, you're just so mean to your friend, and you know it's wrong in the moment, but you just do it anyway. So you are mean to friend. Or maybe your parents tell you to do something and you disrespect them and you know it's wrong, but once again, you do it. And so, disrespect, there we go. Um, and so, every time we sin, this whiteboard that represents us gets more full with this blue marker, right? And it looks less and less like the pure, clean whiteboard that we had in the beginning. Um, and so, you know what you've done is wrong, and you try and fix it yourself, right? You're like, okay, um, I know I gossiped about my friend, but let, let me try and fix it myself. Um, and so you rub on it, and can you guys see that nothing is happening here? Nothing is happening, it's still here. And we try and we try and fix our sin and do it our own way. But that doesn't work. But we have Jesus. Okay, and now watch this. Spray a little bit of this. And then it's getting cleaner. It's gone. That, the, the gossip is gone. And so you spray a little more. And you wipe it off. And then you, you keep spraying it and spraying it and spraying it until it's back to, the, to how it looked at first. And so the same is with Jesus, okay? Jesus comes and he wipes our sins completely away. Jesus, when Jesus lived on earth, he lived a perfect life without sin. Jesus never did anything wrong. And then he died on the cross and rose again three days later. He did that so that you and I could be completely forgiven. Any sin that we will ever commit, any sin that we've ever committed, completely forgiven. Isn't that amazing? That's so beautiful. But here's the thing. Because Jesus forgave us of our big sin. He tells us to forgive those who hurt us. He says, when that person lies about you, when that person steals from you, when that person um, cheats something, cheats against you, whatever it is, he tells us to forgive them. And that's kind of hard, right? Um, but that's why we need him. Just like with the whiteboard, you couldn't get the sin off until we introduced this, okay, which represents Jesus. When we are struggling to forgive others, that's where Jesus comes in, and he helps us. All we have to do is ask. In Matthew chapter 18, there's a parable, um, and it's called the parable the parable of the unforgiving servant. Um, and so there was the servant who owed his master a lot of money. 
I searched it up this morning, and the money that he owed was basically like 200,000 years worth of his salary. Now, that's a big amount, and he never would be able to repay this amount. Um, and so one day the master called the servant in, and he said, um, I would like my money, you know, please pay, ba pay it back. But the servant begged with his master. He said, master, please forgive me. I can't pay this back. And so the master, out of his own mercy, forgave the servant. But now the servant, um, let's call him John, okay? But now John, uh, and that's not his real name, but just for the story, uh, went out and he saw, um, he saw his friend or another servant who owed him money. And the, the amount of money that this other servant owed him was worth 20 days of salary. Imagine, 20 days in comparison to 200,000 years worth of salary, okay? And so John found this other servant, and he said, um, and he said give me back my, my money. And the servant begged him, and he said, please forgive me, I can't pay you back. But the first servant said, no. You, you will go to jail until you pay me back my money. And so, and so all the servants around, him, uh, around them saw what happened, and they went back to the master, and they said, Master, the servant that you forgave of his big debt won't even forgive his friend of a little debt. And so the master was angry when this happened, and so he called the servant back in, um, and he got him thrown in jail, and he said, until you pay me back that money, which he never could, then, then, until you pay me back that large money, then I'll set you free. And guys, just his name was not John, just to clarify. Um, I use that for the story. But right at the at end of the parable, Jesus says, unless you forgive your brother and your sister from the very bottom of your heart, this is how my, fa my father will treat you. And, you know, that hits me as well. Do you, you know, you can't see your, your own heart. I can't see your heart. You can't see anyone's heart, right? It's hidden. Um, but Jesus can see our hearts. And so when Jesus tells us to forgive from the very bottom of our hearts, we can ask him for help. We can ask him when we're struggling to forgive someone, when we're struggling to forgive um, someone who hurt us, someone who lied to us, someone who stole from us, we can ask Jesus for help. And all we have to do is pray because Jesus forgave us of our big sin that we could never, ever be able to make up or repay. And so he tells us to do the same with those around us. And so I'm going to pray quickly um, before we finish off. So everybody, close your eyes. Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you so much for every single child who is listening today. I thank you for just how precious every single child is. And Lord, I pray um, if anyone is struggling to forgive, forgive, struggling to forgive their friends, struggling to forgive someone who hurt them, I just pray, Jesus, that you would help them, help them to forgive. Thank you that you love us so much and that you want us to forgive those around us. And thank you for dying for us and for, for forgiving us so that we can live our lives and we can forgive those around us. In your precious name I pray, amen. Amen. Alrighty, teacher Zoe, thank you so much for that lesson. Super, super cool. Guys, this whiteboard trick is so cool. Okay, I'm going to share a little secret. It's actually deodorant that she sprayed. It's super, super cool. Mm -hmm. Love it. And it smells really good afterwards, which I think is a good thing. Guys, we've had so many comments. So, Teacher Zoe, some people have been telling me what they think is in your backpack before okay. you told them. All right. We got a Bible, <gasps> a pencil case, juice, and chocolates. Mm -hmm. I think I like that. That's a good yeah. combination. I agree with that. Definitely. So Ricky and Gabby, Kylie and Evan, Teacher Michaela, Timley and Sean, Colton and Connor, Max and Alex, the Bazaid and Her triplets, all of you guys are commenting and more of them are commenting and interacting with us. Thank you guys so much. We love it. Sarah, I really hope you enjoyed Armor of God because I know that's your favorite song. So I hope you enjoyed that one. Teacher Zoe. Um, where can the kids find all the coloring in stuff? Um, so you can find all the resources, all the coloring in pages at on the website. So ask your parents to go onto the website and it is all there just for you. 
perfect. And guys, we miss you so, so, so much. Don't forget to stay connected. We have our Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all of our stuff. And we're so excited to see you super, super soon. Hey? Yes. Super, super definitely. soon. We miss you guys. Enjoy your Sunday.